Welcome back to more sports in West Levine. We've got a guy here tonight who knows everybody in the world. I don't know anybody who knows more people than George Veras, who's with the Hall of Fame. He's the executive producer at the Hall of Fame. Hello, George. How are you? Did you meet any new people today to add to your stable? Um, Les, that's very kind of you. You know, you're very well connected as well. There's nobody who's done more on the Cleveland sports scene for a longer time. Just terrific work. Um, you know, every day there becomes a connection. We're uh, we're doing like the whole world does, uh, virtual uh, television shows. Uh, we're doing virtual museum tours. And uh, I just connected with the, uh, the Michigan alumni group through a woman who actually has on her lawn the placard of one of my cousins running for Congress in Michigan. So there you go. That's that's how the world is today. Did, did he or she win, or is that coming up? No, she lost the primary for Republican nomination for the House of Representatives in Grand Rapids, but she'll be back another day, Lynn F. Undulis. All right. Tell, tell me, one of the things that the Pro Football Hall of Fame has bragged about, or, or I think of it as bragging about it, is, is you have somebody from every every state of the union at uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame every every day, I would assume. And uh, yep. with what's going on now, that's that's an, almost an impossibility. So what are you as the Hall of Fame people, what are you guys doing to keep things moving? Well, a tip of the hat to our incredible operations people uh, who have uh, kept this building safe and clean, uh, our museum staff people, uh, we opened up on June 10th after a three month shutdown, the longest in history. We've had over 10,000 visitors from 48 states. And the good news is nobody's called back to say we got COVID. Um, and, you know, I think it will happen, but safe distancing, wearing the masks, uh, very well scrubbed down. But actually, the museum, the way it's laid out less, is very good for social distancing. It would normally take you three or four hours to get through everything in the museum on a typical visit. Um, and so for us, uh, we're at about 28% capacity. It grows every day. We average about 250 fans a day and the weekend goes up to 400. We have a great promotion called the backyard where from Thursday to Saturday between five and eight, cause we're open from 9 AM to 8 PM. You can bring, uh, your child for free to the hall of fame uh, as if you're going out for a backyard barbecue Our marketing people have come up with a lot of creative promotions. But, you know, it's football and it will be interesting. And I know we'll talk about it later, but if football isn't around, as you pointed out, the reports are changing every day. We remain open for football. And it'll be interesting to see how that uh, helps our, our attendance. We hope it doesn't happen. We'd much rather have football uh, than anything else, which I think is good for us, good for the country. And we hope that happens. Well, the timing couldn't have been worse. And you guys have really rebounded from it. The timing talking about the cancellation of the game and, and, and all that. So what if somebody comes in from uh, the, the state of Iowa, for example, what are they going to see at the Pro Football Hall of Fame uh, based on what you've been able to do uh, with, with what's going oh. on on the outside? Look, we have history on everybody connected to anything. So I'll give you the, uh, you, you love trivia, and you name the Hall of Famers that played ball at the University of Iowa. The Hall of Famers from uh, Iowa. Guy, uh, Roy uh, uh, Kinnick, George uh, uh, Kinnick. Not on the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. All right, I give up. College. I, yes, sir. Okay. So it's Paul Krause, oh, who's yeah. still the Iowa Minnes Minnesota this Viking. Day. Right, but he remains the all time interception leader in the NFL. And a new recent addition from our centennial class is Alex Karras. So we have artifacts from the Karras family. We've got Paul Krause's ball when he set the NFL record. You know, we're tied to anything and anybody from every state. I, um, whether it's, And by the way, we're not just the place that houses the records of the Hall of Fame. We are the keepers of the game's history, the keepers of the flame. We have the record of every single uh, NFL legend that ever played. And we'll talk later about our centennial celebration that will be on national TV September 17th when we unveil an incredible job by the city of Canton, the $12 million Centennial Plaza and 10, 11 player pylons that will have the names of everyone who's ever played in the game that the Hall of Fame historian spent three years betting, right nickname, right date, made sure they played in the game. And it's the first only sports organization to memorialize the name of every member that ever played in its league, never done by a sports organization, done by the Vietnam veterans for the Vietnam walls 
that type of thing. So it's going to be spectacular. We'll be on national TV. We'll talk about that later. George, if I had enough time, I would have come up with Paul Krause, but I totally forgot that Karras played at Iowa. He just didn't seem uh, like an Iowa football player. Well, you know, his father was Greek. It was a, 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 you know, had a restaurant in Des Moines, and, you know, uh, the Greeks are, you know, everywhere in every country with a diner someplace. When, do, when you go into that building every day, which is an honor, I would, I would think, uh, and, yes. and I would think you'd, you'd never give up not knowing how special it is to be there. Are there still s stories that hit you that you either hadn't thought oh. of in years or, uh, or somebody gave you information you didn't have? Well, on a daily basis, it, it, throughout the week, will that happen to you? It happens every day. Our lament is that we're so busy creating and churning out the stories that we don't have more time to literally walk through the building because the people who come here, this is their their holy grail. This is this is the you know going to the Vatican. They are in, deeply embedded in the history of the game, their love of the game. They give it up, and I'm talking about the families who cherish football for what it means to them. Their uh, their passion and their stories are amazing. We've had, it's unbelievable every day and, and it is a special place. It's an honor to be here from a content and storytelling point of view. It's such a treasure trove. And we have built the last three years a media company. We have done programming, we've done television shows and you know, next year we could have 70 hours of television shows on the air for all these different stories that we're doing that speak to the value of the game and what it means to everybody. Hi, one of the things you've got coming up is the Enshrinement Marathon. Tell me about what that's all about. So the Enshrinement, um, uh, Hall of Fame Enshrinement Marathon is our first video on demand. And for us and for fans, we've got great reception. It fills the gap of things that they would have seen if we had had Enshrinement, but much, much more. So we're offering it for your viewers, a special code is out there. You see the graphic. If you go to vod.profootballhof.com and type in the code MSLL, you can watch 40 hours of exclusive enshrinements, gold jacket shows the last six years. But the exclusive part never before seen are 60 one-on-one -on -one interviews that I conducted the day after Hall of Famers got into the hall at the Super Bowl from Troy Palomalo to um, uh, Bill Cower to uh, Ed Reed, uh, uh, every single player, 60 of them, behind the scenes of David Baker's knock on the door, the knock on the doors. And it really is a feast for any football fan. You can watch it over and over, share with your family and kids, and feel like not only you've been to enshrinement, but you've been to enshrinements that you've never seen. And it's only 19.99, and it's available right now. And thank you guys for letting us share this with you. But it's our way that we're attacking COVID-19. We're doing. I just got an email from the uh, Cleveland group. We're doing virtual uh, tours of the Hall of Fame for groups uh, and taking gearing them to the teams that they're interested in. And it's like we don't do just the Zoom less, but we do a TV production. Absolutely. And so for Browns fans, you can do that for $30 a ticket. If you want more like our archivists and historians talking, you can do it for $50 a ticket. We are booking these things left and right for those who can't get here as well. So we keep the museum alive. We keep the history alive. We keep our programming alive through the use of uh, the web and virtual reality event program. And the code again is MSLL. George, I've got a story for you that you probably hear this kind of story every day, but it really hit me. The, um, eight or ten years ago at the, uh, at the induction at the hotel uh, the afternoon before, uh, I was there and I was talking to Dante Lavelli, who, who I knew. My family knew Dante. And we're talking and talking and talking. And I look over to the corner and I see Terry Bradshaw is watching what's going on with uh, Dante and me and my brother. And the interview is over and I start walking away. And, and Terry Bradshaw, my goodness, Terry Bradshaw, you'd think, you, you wouldn't think this would happen, but it did. He said, was that Dante? I said, yeah. He says, you know, I've never met him before. Would you mind coming over and introducing him to me? I, to me, now that probably happens every day to you, but it was astounding to me. Um, Les, it's a great perspective. And if, even though it happens, it's still astounding. I'll give you an example at the Super Bowl. 
uh, when Brett Favre got in, and it's Brett Favre. Now, you know, what was the discussion on Brett Favre in the room? Ten seconds? He's in the Hall of Fame. Right. He's Brett Favre. He was like a little kid, and he said to David Baker, is that Roger Staubach? This was backstage at the NFL Honors. And David says, yeah, he says, I've always wanted to meet him. Can would, you introduce me to him? Would you? I, 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 would never, I would never believe that. Yeah, no, it's a true story. Because, again, what we, what we fail to remember of these players when they're in the moment playing is they grew up huge football fans. Right. And they have heroes. And, and, and the thrill of getting the Hall of Fame for them is being, as Deacon Jones said, you're on a team that you can never be traded for from, you can never be cut from, and you're on a team of the players that you've admired the most your whole career, and now you're one of those players. So when the new class comes here for the induction ceremony, the enshrinement, they get together at, and their initiation is at something called the Ray Nitschke Luncheon, which is close to all of us. And that is like a field of dreams. So you have Joe Namath talking with Roger Staubach and talking with Brett Favre. So you've got, and, and by the way, these guys, all these players are true football historians. They, they, they didn't get to greatness by not studying every aspect of the game from plays to hard work to history. What, what's your favorite part of the hall or favorite exhibit? Well, why don't we, that's a very good question. We produced a hologram show called A Game for Life four years ago. And it's a 20 minute Disney-like production. You walk into a locker room that's the ultimate locker room with artifacts from Jim Thorpe on one side of the wall to modern players on the other side of the wall. Joe Namath hosts the show as a hologram. That was very special for me. I think I mentioned to you before, I was blessed. My career started as a ball boy for Joe Namath the first day he walked down the field. My uncle operated on his knee, created the knee brace. It's a fifth year relationship and Joe hosted this show. And basically you have eight other Hall of Famers talking about their road to greatness and then the show ends with holograms of George Hallis and Vince Lombardi, actually the actual actor who played Vince Lombardi on Broadway, exhorting the audience to get out and play your game for life. I love the show, but I'm proud of it because you get great reaction from eight to 80 year olds. The challenge was how do you make it relevant to kids, but yet not make it boring for adults and football savants. And when we tested this out in California before we brought it here, Kids used to come in all bouncing all over the walls, but every time they watched the show, by the end of the show, they not only got quiet, but the first thing they did when the show ended is they raised their hands with questions. And so that show, I'm proud of. That show is still entertaining, and no other museum has a hologram show in the sports world like we have here. I can't imagine that this would happen, but let's say you have a, a group of kids, a family and a group of kids coming in, uh, one of them not necessarily a football fan. What is the biggest reaction to them when, when the door, when it's, when it's done, uh, somebody, I'm, I can't even believe I'm saying the, the kid wouldn't be a football player or a football fan, but what is it that, that really hit him while he was in there, besides Ray Nitschke? <laughs> yeah, very good lad. Um, I think that they're blown away by the depth of the history that they see here, the artifacts, uh, the boards that, that clearly lay out the history of the game we have in the rotunda every decade clearly outlined. The things that it, it's like they get, you know, they, they get home and they get their sort of slice of the cake by following their team. But when they come into the hall, they're sitting at a banquet table and they're getting the feast of football that they have only gotten bits and pieces of, but now they're gorging everything all at once. And, and everything tastes better at the Hall of Fame. There's something that happens when you come here. I call fans, give it up. You know, what, what's amazing is, is that uh, they come through, they spend more money per person on our merchandise than any museum. And I've seen it before in other museums. When you walk through the Smithsonian or went, went to the Chicago Museum uh, on the Monet exhibit. But when people come to really uh, study the passion of their uh, feelings for an event. They come here and they are open. They're open to be inspired. 
they're open to soak it all in because they're taking with them something that's a lifetime memory that they're going to talk about with their families for years at the Thanksgiving Day table of what they saw at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. No question about it. George, we really appreciate you stopping by today. Fascinating build business, fascinating building. Uh, the sport of football is, is just unbelievable and gets bigger and bigger. Let, let's run through one more time about the video and how we can get it with our special code. The normal price is $29.99, but for this show, all you have to do is go to bod.profootball, uh, profootballhof.com, type in the code MSLL, and you can watch ad nauseum this 40-hour binge watching like you watch on Netflix. No one else has it for $19.99. The last five years have been Shrine and Cold Jacket shows, 60 one-on-one interviews with Hall of Famers, behind the scenes David Baker, knock on the door. And it's a great, great way to fill the void of not watching the games or being here in Shrimant. Hello and welcome to Hall of Fame in Shrimant Marathon, a full month of video binging from the exclusive vault of Hall of Fame Productions. Visit vod.profootballhof.com, the first ever video on demand experience for fans to enjoy will be available August 1st through August 31st. Experience over 40 hours of shows, never before seen interviews with Hall of Famers, and behind the scenes content of the Knock on the Door and the Bill Cower and Jimmy Johnson's live walk-ons. We will take you through the enshrinement ceremonies from 2014 through 2019, where Hall of Famers unveiled their bronzed bust that lasts for 40,000 years and give the speeches of their lifetime on national television in front of millions. The Gold Jacket Ceremonies from 2014 through 2019, a special night in Canton, Ohio, when those that are enshrined go down a golden gauntlet of previous enshrinees and receive the first of three icons, the Gold Jacket. The most exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews recorded two days after the new class members found out their legacies will live in Canton, Ohio forever. The life-changing knock on the door from Hall of Famer President David Baker that sparks raw emotions for the newest Hall of Famer and their families. And finally, a behind-the-scenes look at the moments before enshrinement, never-before-seen footage of the knock on the door and the famous live walk-ons seen by millions on CBS and Fox. Now, here's how it works. From August 1st through August 31st, you will get an all-access pass for $29.99 for a month of a spectacular, uninterrupted viewing. I know I'm missing sports like crazy, especially football. So this is your chance to look at never before seen content exclusively from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. These great stories can be seen on any device, including smartphones, tablets, laptops, and a smart TV. Let's start streaming together. Football is back for the entire family. Visit vod.profootballhof.com dot com to start streaming now.